So I have a pretty short, quick video this week where I show you how I made these butcher block style coasters. Um, it's a very simple project. Um, any sort of even beginner DIYer I think could easily make it. It's great for gifts. That's where um, I originally made them was actually for a gift. I wasn't planning on filming them for, for YouTube, but um, since I made them, I actually posted a video of them on my Instagram and people have been asking about not only purchasing them, but also um, if I was going to make a video. So since this is uh, Thanksgiving weekend and um, historically speaking, at least for my channel, my videos don't do as well over holiday weekends, which makes sense. People are enjoying spending time with family and, and doing other things. So I'm not going to complain about that. But I'm pretty excited about the next project I'm working on. So this was almost kind of a filler video to add to it. It's perfect for this time of year because these are great for Christmas presents or, or quick things to make. So the, the thing I like the most about these is not only are they probably geared more so to to DIYers than some of my recent projects, but also because um, they utilize lots of scrap I have around the shop. I like to save everything, so little cutoffs and stuff I'll keep around for a while. There's really not a lot of uses for them because they're smaller pieces of lumber, but um, you can use a ton of them for this and, and make something that someone will like and um, instead of throwing out all that material. So it's gonna be a quick little video. I consider these very easy to make. I think any sort of skill level can definitely make a set. I made a whole batch of them this time um, to, to, to give away. So, so it's going to, like I said, be a pretty short basic video on how um, I made these. So like I said, one of my favorite parts about this project is it use, utilizes a ton of cutoffs that I don't like to throw away, but I don't have a huge use for. So you can see I start by pulling out a pile of scrap and then I turn it into these smaller pieces. Um, there's really, the dimensions for this are fairly arbitrary. You can make bigger chunks, you can make smaller chunks. It's really kind of what you want. But these are basically, I, I make about four different um, shape slats to make up the, the pieces that will this will come out of. It's various species of wood from maple, um, the nice thing to, to walnut or even oak, the nice thing about the butcher, uh, the butcher block coasters versus a cutting board is that you can use species that you wouldn't necessarily, necessarily use for a cutting board like oak because they're extremely porous. So um, pieces of food and whatnot can get trapped in there when you're making a cutting board, but for a coaster, it doesn't really matter. So I cut all these down to about 14 inches. That's the, that's the dimension that I found worked the best when I made these the first time around. And then I split them into about five 16th inch slats. That's also the, a dimension I liked from the first time around. You can make these thicker or thinner, really depending on how you wanna play around with, with the design. So cutting those into the five 16 inch slats, I'm left with a bunch of these thin strips. I like to utilize all the pieces of the lumber for this. So I'm just going through and cutting these down also into thinner slats. And then I'll use those in the final piece. So these are still 5 16 So these are going to be about um, 5 16 wide um, by the, the, the thinness that they were. So this is that little pile that I'm left over with. So this is where I get all my thin pieces from. So I'll go through, there will be some that won't be totally flat or perfect. I'll go through and pick those out and then throw the rest into the pile. So then from the pile that I cut the first time around, I'm gonna go through and cut these into the different sizes. This is also pretty arbitrary. I don't do anything much bigger than three eighths of an inch. So you can see I'm cutting three eighths of an inch and I'm getting two, two cuts, an off cut and the three eighths inch piece. So that's kind of nice, I'm getting two, two at once. And then I'll go down to about a quarter and then I'll go down to about an eighth. So with the 3 8 inch um, and all those cuts, you could see I'm getting two pieces and I keep both those pieces. And then that is my pile of slats. So I'll have um, fairly thick pieces to, to pretty thin. And that's basically um, the extent of that. Like I said, if you wanna start worrying about designs and stuff like that, you can with this. Um, for me, it's, it's pretty much an asymmetric sort of design and I just put everything together. It makes life easier. If you wanna get intense with this and plan out a design, it's doable just like a cutting board. 
but um, the one nice thing about these butcher blocks I like is is not really worrying about math or, or uh, planning it out too much beforehand. So I had some scrap pieces of wood that I covered with some painter's tape. I'm going to glue this up on, on two huge calls and one long strip. The last time I did this, I only made four coasters at once, so gluing up wasn't a big deal. I had never glued up something this thin and this long, so it was kind of a process in trial, of trial and error. So you can see I'm laying everything out and then I'm arranging the pieces. I don't want walnuts next to walnuts or maples next to maples, and I don't want all the thin pieces in one place. So I'm just kind of going through and laying it out uh, the way I want, kind of splitting up the species as well as the thickness of the pieces. So then I'm just using a piece of aluminum foil to add glue to all the pieces. Um, the temperature has started to change by me because of the fall. So um, it was actually kind of warm the past couple days, but before this it was pretty chilly. So the open time of the tight bond is a little bit warmer than it is in the middle of the summer, which is kind of nice. Unfortunately, that also means that things do dry slower, so I let these set up overnight. You can see I'm just very quickly adding glue to one edge of all these and then adding them into place, kind of squeezing them together as I go and trying to keep them um, as straight as possible going down the line. It's not going to be perfect, but I wanted it pretty close. Then I could have my top side calls and a couple of clamps. I'll put C clamps on all of the top side calls as well as some pipe clamps along the edge. Like I said, I was a little nervous about this working and, and gluing up flat because I hadn't done anything this long before, but this, this actually turned out really good. I was really happy with, with how flat these turned out, which is important because when you turn these on edge, if there's, there's gaps or voids, you'll see it in the finished piece, um, as well as the fact that it didn't wave or undulate too much. As you can see that I'm adding on the pipe clamps. These will help, help flatten everything as well. So then the next day I could come in and take all of my clamps off. You could see how many seat clamps I added to the top just to hold everything flat. And also, you know, to check to make sure the adhesion was pretty good. Um, if this started to fall apart as I was taking the clamps off, which honestly was, I was a little nervous about because it is so long, but it held together pretty well. So I'm taking the top side calls off so I could sand the top, I'm keeping the bottom calls on because it will be the easiest way to, to use the belt sander on this. It won't move around on me if I could clamp those calls to the table. So I'm using a fairly abrasive grit disc. I'm using a 60 grit disc to just remove a lot of that glue and to flatten the surface. Now, like I said, it was really important to not have a lot of undulation in the top because if you have low spots, you have to sand the rest of the surface down to that low spot. So I was pretty happy with how flat this glued up. Obviously there were low spots, but with that 60 grit belt sander, it took care of that pretty quickly. There were still a couple little spots with some glue, but um, the, the way I made these before, since it's not a cutting board, like I've said, um, I could fill little spots with epoxy and not worry about it too much. So then I could flip this over, do the exact same thing on the bottom. The bottom side of pieces like this are usually much flatter than the top, and this one was as well, so there was much less sanding to do. I just went through and removed some of that dried glue with the scraper and then sanded this as well. So then it's time to cut these into strips. These are about three and three eighths inch wide. You can make them as wide as you want. I think that that size pretty, is pretty decent. It will hold most beverage cups. So I have a stop set up and I'm just cutting these down on the radial arm saw. I like to cut these on the radial arm saw because I didn't uh, true up one of the edges. It was flat enough that I could cheat it a little way one way or the other on the radial arm saw and get a, get a flat cut. So then I'm cutting these into about five eighths inch thickness strips. Um, I like that look. Once again, you can make them as thick or uh, thin as you want. I'd be a little cautious about going too thin, but uh, these are about five eighths inch strips and I'm just cutting through all of my pieces. So you can see I have this stack of cuts behind me. So this is where you get the uniqueness of the pieces. Even though it's one big strip, you're gluing up because I didn't do it in a pattern. Every single one of these coasters is gonna be different. So when I do give them out, it's a set of four unique coasters. Obviously you can make them so that they're all matching, but I, I like that the fact, the fact that they're all different. So then once I have my sets, I can just flip 
every other piece over and that's where the pattern comes into play. So I'm keeping these in different sets. You'll see later I also make a set of random, randomized um, squares out of, out of the scraps. So you can see the scraps are up top. Each one of the original coasters I think was 12, 12 pieces. So with the leftovers, I just mis mixed up all the squares and made um, a set of randomized ones. If I would have done my math a little bit better, I would have ended up with four of these. And I'm also one coaster shy of having four sets. So um, these aren't really, I only one set of these is sold right now. So I was just making a bunch, but next time around, I would probably do a little bit of math in order to get even, even sets. Cause right now I have, I believe three sets of four and two sets of three. So then to glue these together, I'm just using rubber bands instead of clamps. It makes life a lot easier. I'm also being, being pretty diligent about removing the glue off of the tops and bottoms before letting it dry. Um, uh, sawing, sawing, sanding end grain is much harder than, than face grain. So removing a lot of the glue just saves a ton of time down the line with, with sanding. So these were actually pretty clean. So the next day I could come and take the rubber bands off and then um, true up the edges. So the edges are not going to be perfect. So I true up the one side, one edge, and then the top as well. And then you'll see I'll set up a stop and then cut down the other two edges according to the stop so that all of these are about the exact same size. Here's the stop. So two edges are trued up and I could just keep switching them and shoe up the other two edges. The nice thing about this is, as well as with the rubber band, you're gonna have a ton of glue squeeze out, squeeze out on the edges. And I, um, by, by trimming them on the table saw, then you don't really have to sand the edges. To sand the top, I just uh, screwed some cleats into the top of my outfeed table, and that holds it in place while I could use, once again, this is still a 60, 60 grit belt. And, and clean off the top. These glued up really well. I was very happy with them. There wasn't a lot of low spots or high spots, so sanding them was quite easy. And then I just go through with some epoxy mixed with a little bit of sawdust and fill any gaps that I have in there. Once again, there wasn't a ton, so that was also nice. And then to finish this up, I'm, I'm doing 80 grit on the belt sander, and then I'll, I'll clear coat them. I don't go higher than that. Um, they always turn out pretty smooth with the 80 grit and I'll sand them in between coats of, of the finish. So then to make a display for this, like I said, only one of these I have sold so far, so I'm only making one. Once again, I'm using scrap. This is a scrap piece of oak and I'm just drilling f uh, four five inch dowel holes into the corners and the, these corners are based on the width and length of the coasters. So there's going to be a pencil mark on top. And then I just cut five inch dowels to, to length. And you can see they slide into place and hold the coasters in place. So I'll coat this with the same finish I'm putting on the coasters. It's a really easy display and, and nice clean look. So I'm putting a tongue oil finish on this. You couldn't use something like this on, on a, um, a cutting board because it's not food grade safe. But for something like this, not only does this have tongue oil in it, but it will have a little bit of varnish in it. So the oil will bring out the, the nice look of the grain and the varnish will protect it a little bit from the, the water and condensation that will be on the top. This will get two coats and I'm not gonna film the second coat, but this is basically what everything's gonna look like once it's finished. You can see I have a nice a random pattern. None of, none of the two look the same. And, and that is basically it. Like I said, a very easy, simple project, a great way to get rid of scrap and uh, a nice, simple Christmas project for people that are looking for something like that to make someone.